Welcome to uh, part two here, uh, hopefully of two, <laughs> unless things go bad uh, with our housing here. We started previously with our uh, small compact shaft with two bearings, same size. Uh, one of the things we're going to be one of the things we're going to be trying to do here is get the caps uh, sorted out. Again, what we're after here is the Orlov caps, and we're also going to be quite concerned about getting the SKF stand uh, guide at least somewhat happy and we're also going to be using Arlov's guides from volume four on fastening bearings by snap rings uh, we're going to be trying for C-ish here uh, so he has a little bit of a different arrangement here in this uh, diagram which is pleasant uh, and can be used at both ends if we wished to put uh, this Ring snap ring to bearing at both ends of this little tiny shaft of this uh, compact shaft. Uh, we're going to leave one floating, but we're going to follow this advice right here. So, why do this? Um, snap rings are quite strong, um, but they're they're not as strong as clamping it with a cap. Assuming that it's not showing as little fasteners like they see in uh, EF here in Figure two one four. So we'll leave some room for. Uh, sort of an arrangement of fasteners uh, and we're going to hold the bearing in place uh, so we'll clamp it one direction or hold it in one direction with the cap and then the other directions hold is with the ring group the ring um, basically if you read around here which is well worth your time uh, he explains why a is no good you don't want to put a groove in the housing uh, b is okay but it's got quite a lot of touches uh, he, Orlov, through time, would probably be not ultra happy with this. But keep in mind, there's a little tiny gap here. So this is not over constrained, but there is a gap between the cap and the housing. If you wanted to put a gasket in here or something like this, this would be ideal. We are not going to do a gasket, so we're going to be going for a C here-ish. So we'll use SKF's numbers and come up with this arrangement. So let's do the easy one first, uh, the other side, which is going to be basically this without any rings or any sort. So let's get used to that. So we'll do the side without the ring. So that's over here. And we'll just do an easy uh, pass. Let's have a look what he wants. A cap. That's it. Easy. So let's do that. Um, in previous videos, <laughs> I used the same sketch again, that's fine. Um, but for now, I'm actually going to create a different sketch uh, just to keep things under control and straightforward. So we'll do another sketch with the geometry out here. Um, right here, I want to put them together. It won't do any harm to the history out here. So let's right click here and roll history marker here. I'll roll it across. And we don't really need the cluster all the time, so let's hide that from for most of the time. So let's do the easy one. See what we've got here. I'm gonna put it on the same side. So this is not fully constrained right now, the other sketch, so we'll from time to time go back to that. But essentially we've got kind of a curve. So a rectangle and a curved path. Let's do that first. Uh, so first, let's pick our plane for a new sketch. And we have two sketches now. This will be our cap sketch. Let's do a rectangle. And again, Autodesk is picky, as they should be. Uh, so we can't just click on and snap onto things. We have to project. So I'm going to project the other sketch into this sketch and then link them in. Seems crazy, but it is always a good idea. Uh, these sorts of overt projections. I'm going to do the same thing as before and use a central line that I can use for dimensioning. Let's make sure I've got all that ready and we can selectively look at bearings. Now, I'm going to snap to this, but if we look closely at our love, it's a little off. Oh, nice. Our old friend. Again, the same argument as before, let's keep the sketch, which is controlling things, and start 
doing work this way instead. So I'm drawing right through that first rectangle. It's up to you how you want to work this. You can do a tangency here and finish. So you can see it kind of works. So let's go make that vertical. It'll snap to whatever it's closest to. We can put this coincident on the center line. Again, not sure which one we're getting. Make sure we're getting this one. Nice. <laughs> Pulls it away. Pull it back. Oh, oh, how do you do this? So in Fusion, the easiest way is to draw, select both things and pull it then. So now we can do a dimension with our the old standard. We call it a standard fillet, but it's actually it can become our standard offset. We can use it here though. This is a standard again. So that's our first fillet that's controlled by the standard fillet. Nice. How far does it have to go? Let's have a look at the cluster. I'm going to project the end of that threaded part of the shaft. Hide the cluster. Nice. In a way, it's the easiest thing to just go ahead here and say that and the center of the fillet have to be aligned. That gives us all sorts of stuff going on. We can start to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? To mention this guy, NWT, we've been using times two quite a lot. Let's make sure we've got that. Yeah, it looks about the same. Let's make sure, turn our other sketch on. We have moved things around, but it's, you know, it's kind of in the same vicinity. NWT times two looks good. He's got it lined up on the outside edge. So let's project that little vertex there and make it coincident. Uh, it's up to you either the point or the edge, whatever you want. So that's fully controlled. Now we just need to get our, uh, why, oh, looks the same. So let's do an offset. So escape out of that tool. I'm just escape out of the tool, double click it. S offset. Make sure it's going the right way. And NWT. Notice the center line acts as a perimeter or sorry, profile uh, perimeter. Nice. Let's do a little test here. We could add some uh, radii here, but we're going to use the fillet tool for that later. So let's just try it. Finish the sketch. I'm going to give this sketch a bare name. Cap profile. Or caps. Uh, profile. And revolve. Carefully picking. I don't want that inside piece. Axis, well, the, the use. Again, which one am I picking? It's not a big deal here, but let's get the right one. And new body. If you wanted to do this, and we don't, but if you did want to do this, you would join this. You could, you would have to have the other stuff showing. But for now, I want a new body. And then you think, uh, hold on, why not create a new component? It immediately shows a preview, which is going to be a different color. So I'm gonna make this a new component and it's gonna be within the housing. Nice. Gives it a standardized component name. I'm the slow double click, I'll call this right, or sorry, something like cap right. Great. That was easy. Now notice where it is. Let's play our history right to the end. It works well, right? It splits the housing again, but doesn't split the cap and all the rest. What if we move this way out to the end? So I'm dragging the actual feature. Does it split it now? No. Perfect. Let's check the cluster. Good clearances. Everything looks good. Nice. Well, that's quite good. So let's go ahead and do the same. So now we've got a feel for this. We're and re, just to reiterate here, we shifted some history, then we actually moved this revolve, which makes the new, what's the word I'm looking for, component. 
uh, and on the fly more or less. So keep that at the end. Let's do the same. Let's edit the caps profile. Get rid of the cluster visibility because it's kind of getting in the way. Let's check Orloff. It's kind of tight up here, and this is where the fun begins. So, but it's not too bad. However, this is a little smaller. So let's just be a little careful in here. SKF asks for, yeah, smaller. And they give us a DA55. Just gonna copy that right now. So copy that. And we're gonna be going for C here. So we need to be a little bit above the ring outer diameter. So why not use DB as well? So 69 and 55, let's do that. So let's show our sketch. Now we used the ring before. So it's up to us, we can either project this and then we get a chain of projections or we can project directly from this uh, body. Uh, there's a lot of arguing either way. I'm going to project from this guy again. So intersect. Selection filter. Let's go for that. That's the one we need. And I'm actually going to ask also for some information about the bearing again. Say, okay. Hide. Well, let's keep the cluster visible for a second here. So keep in mind what's coming. Uh, we are going right up and filling this area here. So what I need here is a, what's the easiest way to do this? It's most obvious. I'm gonna start with the same rectangle again. That's what SKF wants. That's what Orlov wants. I'm gonna draw a rectangle that fills this and then cut a piece out of it. So let's do that. So first a rectangle. And we're going from out to the inside corner of that. So oh, before I do that, let me get that point. Sorry. This intersect I use all the time. I should add this. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Let's get that again. Say OK. Now I can draw a rectangle from there. Out. Let's see if we're getting that right. So from the inside out, the inside out, it is reversed, but that's what we're doing. Nice. Now, Orlov, is there our other thing? We're asking for this to be aligned, so why not? And we've got all this other stuff that's controlling this, but we can reuse this sketch. Nice, since we're in it. So let's line that up with that guy. Perfect. Looks about the same length. So let's also make them equal. Perfect. Now, what do we need here? Let's look at our love. Need to cut this out, go around the bearing. So I'm gonna start need to be up here. So I'm gonna just hover it so it picks it up and then it won't create a constraint, but we'll be going around it. That's what we want. Let's just finish in a bit here. Then that edge goes and hunts up around the same as the other side. So this line here is where we're at. So let's do that. And angle and Finish. Uh, we can't use the center line anymore because it's put facing the wrong way. So we'll have to deal with that in a second. Nonetheless, let's put that on the same line. Let's project end face of the shaft. And we can hide the cluster for a second here. So same as before. Now, I personally prefer to use equals as much as I can. 
So I'm going to set this to equals. And we can align that new center with our projected line. Nice. What else is going on here? We actually have to be inside the bearing here. Uh, okay, so let's leave that for a second. So let's turn on our cluster and make sure we're getting this right. DA, DB, DB is the size of our gap right now, the, around the top of the ring, DB, 69. Let's dimension that. Control V or Command V. Nice. Let's move that into somewhere that makes more sense. And what else do we have? DA. That's our 55. Why not just use what they supply? 55. So that's this guy. Using the center line again. Uh, you'll notice what's going on here. It's angled. So let's fix this right here. This should be vertical. It's uh, going to get an error here, over constraint. If you want to get rid of things, so for example, this perpendicularity, just click it once and delete it. Then we can make this line vertical. We're a bit more happy with this. You'll notice it's not stuck down yet. So let's go ahead and even though we aligned it when we were sketching, now we're going to force it there. And one more time, 55 DA, DA, that looks right. So one more time. Nice. Does that look like what they've got? Yes, it does. Just a board of this little shape that would hold a seal or a shield. So that's good. Everyone's controlled ish. The length, the, what we're missing is the length of the center line. Let's just try and start getting this a little bit controlled. There we go. Fully constrained. That's good. Uh, we don't have our thickness yet to revolve. So let's go ahead and do that. So escape a couple times, double click that. I don't want the whole thing necessarily, or do I? Let's do an offset going the other way, so offset. If you want chain, turn it off and on. I'm going to just try for picking them sequentially. Pull it to the correct side. See if we need what happens when we do this. If I can grab it, what's going on here? Good Lord. It's not bad. It's, I'm a little worried that this is going to happen right here. It's going to go on the wrong side. Let's try NWT. And it's a negative. It's right on it. So I'm going to turn off chain and unselect some stuff here. That's better. There we go. So just unselect it, that extra bit. So one approach to this is actually chain it and then unchain it and deselect the stuff you don't want. Say OK. Perfect, it's not closed yet. So we just have to put a line in here. Perfect, and it creates a perpendicular constraint. It's looking OK. So we've used the SKF values. And the same approach as otherwise over here. Say OK, finish the sketch. Nothing happens. So we're out here at the end. We're in the right place. Housing is active. Let's go ahead here and make our second cap profiles. We need three axis, same axis. <laughs> Missed it, jerked the mouse. There we go. And I want not a join, but a new component. So things are visible now, so we could get a join if we're not careful. But no, looks good. 
we are getting our cap. So you'll get, and then we'll get a standard cap, uh, component name, slow right, slow double click, and we'll call it cap then. Hide the sketches. It's not bad. Looks okay. Just looking around here. We still have to do some filleting, but everything's looking not bad. There's room for fasteners. Probably a little tight up here, maybe. So we could adjust this if we wanted. We definitely do not want this cap to go below the cylindrical surface holding the bearing in case, just in case, it would be insane if that happened, but if, just in case, if we crash into it and push it off, that would be bad. So one thing we can do is adjust this by turning on our sketches visibility. And you can right click on there and show dimension. Right now we've got this dimension right here and it's controlled by standard fill. What if we just said divide by two? Huh. Not bad. The problem is it tightens it up. No, it doesn't. Oh. It's good. So let's do that. Now we've only got a millimeter, so standard fill divided by two, which is our standard standoff in a way now. That looks good. It's good. So that's our fix ups for geometries. Uh, we're not doing anything to the cluster here. So I'm gonna actually hide the cluster one more time. Let's turn it off. Oh, one last thing. I'm just gonna fix this profile here uh, to figure out where this should be. If you want, I'm just gonna pull it down and snap it on just to get the profile fully defined. So I just pulled the center line down and stuck it onto the end of the sketch. It's fine, won't do any harm to it, but then we get a fully defined pair of sketches, which makes me happy. It's good. And we can hide our origin. Let the fun commence here. We're gonna try here and create, uh, we got an extra little housing here because sometimes, I'm not quite sure why, sometimes it makes a new housing, sorry, a new, component on the fly if we've done it once or twice. Uh, so this is fine though. Let's have a look at what's going on here. Rounds, well, safety is fine, but no round here on the inside of this housing. So we've just got inner fillets everywhere, except for these two spots. So we've got one on here and on the caps are rounds, otherwise it's fillets. Just keep that in mind. So up at the housing level, we're gonna do all three components at once. And I'm gonna keep my analysis turned on here. Uh, keep in mind that we can only see one half. So we'll be turn that off and on from time to time. Fill it F. I'm gonna just do a prototype here. Let's pick something easy. Inside edge. And if we don't have any value yet, it won't preview because there's nothing to preview. So you can see here, one of the problems is that the break is gonna kind of wreck our cell, our plan here. So the break in the housing actually doesn't really work. I wonder if we can fix that. Can we put the break at the end? Again, nice, let's do that. So then when we pick a fillet, it goes right across what will eventually be the break. Let's go ahead and do that. So that's my plan. So let's try and fill it again. So these ones are easy. And we have one at the top. Round, uh, sorry, fillet, fillet, round, fillet. Let's go and try it, standard. Fill. Oh, nice. Looks good. 
sharp on the bottom, otherwise rounded and filleted. Let's move along here. Now, another way to go at this may be, I wonder, if I press Command or Control, depending on what operating system you're in, you can turn off the preview to reselect. What if I select just this entire face? Let's try the analysis off. That actually worked quite nicely. Let's try the top face. So anywhere there's a fillet, it'll fill it. So it does everything at once. That's really nice. It's kind of got a janky corner here though. So turn off the preview. Let's try this. And it's not bad actually. Let's try underneath here. That's good. How about this one? Hmm. Nice. Let's try. Let's see what's going on here. Now he's got a fillet here, Orlov. We assume there's going to be here as well. So let's, what if we add a face here? Ooh, it's perfect. It's quite good. Let's do the same on the back. Turn off the preview there. Nice. Now you can, if you click that, it's getting complicated already. If you click that, you can see What's going on? It's actually quite nicely. It's working nicely. Now you're going to hate this. I'm going to actually X that guy and start again. So I'm clicking those three. Oh, not that one. Good Lord. Let's start again. That face. The top face. Outer face. Of the ring sort of join surface. I'm trying to get what's going on there. There it is. What about this guy? What if I can pick that face? So right now I've got no preview because it's at zero. Now if I try standard, fill. Ah, uh, there's a good plan, but that's maybe right. So if I click, if I just get those three faces, turns out that's enough. Uh, it's shown 15 because they're chaining, but right now I've got three selections, which is doing almost everything. Then I only really need the bottom of that guy because I just work on the foot here. That looks good. So if we're careful, we can kind of get everything done in one pass. Don't like this. That looks good. There we go. So just do the, my advice is basically is to do the faces first. And uh, then we get an error here. So that's a problem. So, so you can see what happens as soon as I start to add one on the top. It gets upset because of this tightness in here. Let's leave that for now. So again, let's see what we've got. Let's get the back, oh, back of this guy. So for me, it's red. Uh, the red cap is easy filleting at this end. Problem is, of course, where the, the ring is because we've got a shorter boss sticking out there. So that's working. We're gonna come back to that stuff. Next is, let's see here. Let's turn on our analysis. We need, it's just something on the inside. Looks like there might be only three here. So let's try that guy. That's good. Okay, guys. Two on each cap to go. We're almost there. Uh, 
Perfect. And then the same on the other guy. Recess a square in there. Recess a square in here. Recess a square here. So we'll leave the recess square. Now, we've done quite a lot of work here. I don't want to lose it by a little crash. Let's say OK to that. Make sure it works. Let's see what we're missing. Yeah, we can see here we've got this. It's not ultra bad. It's not a big deal, really, but I'd like it to be good. Um, better, anyway. Let's be better. So let's go ahead here and edit this fillet one more time. If you're panicked about this, you can do a little save here. Fillet uh, increment or fillet step, fillet, uh, that's the word I'm looking for, whatever, step. And I'll go ahead and save. There it goes. So I can either add a fillet or I can maybe edit the one we have. So one of the big things about this fillet tool is we can add things here. I'm going to add a fillet here, which is standard stand fill divided by two. It's not too bad. What it looked like it was almost working before, so let's just try standard fill. It's fairly janky, but it's not too bad. And what this is doing here is it's essentially ah, it's essentially trying to do things in different orders. So this is standard fill again. Let's let's try standard fill divided by two. Nice. Wrong button, sir. Let's cancel that. Start again. Okay, turn off my analysis because everything inside is good. And if we want, we can hide our caps just to simplify things. The problem is in here. It's the same on both sides. So There's some options here. I'm actually going to edit this fill. So edit the feature. So I click to fill it. With this only one thing picked, I'm going to actually turn off the preview and see what happens if I just unselect these two faces. Here we go. So now on the plus, let's add a different radius and see if it'll let us pick oh yes there we go so this will give us some instructions to the person who's making our casting here we need a smaller fillet uh, right around these parts so again turn off the preview add that oh that's all right can't see the other one Oh, nice. So what we've got is cascading issues here. This is great. I actually kind of love this. You have to be, uh, even now, in the heady years of 2023, filleting is still a bit of a... You know, touchy-feely thing and try it and shift it and kind of methodically work your way through. Notice I got an error there when it wasn't symmetrical. So fillets are very picky still. Uh, it's where the geometry starts to go wrong. Uh, so like, for example, if we start adding here, or taking away, sorry, making sure I've got the fill divided by two selected. That looks good. And are we doing that right here? Oh, yes, we are. So here we go.
a little tight here. We could start fiddling it some more and saying, okay, I don't want it to be an edge here, but all that stuff seems to be right. Let's just say okay and make sure it went well. So let's make sure we got the geometry we want here. Scoot around there. Scoot around there. It's a little different here. It's not bad. See a setback style here. There is something wrong here. Setback. That's where you can see this sort of going back into the corner. And we've got a different, like a uh, just a rolling ball end here. So there is a problem. Let's go ahead here and figure out what that is. No, this is the problem. <laughs> Can't tell which one's which. So let's see here. We've got the big standard fill, fill it selected here. I'm gonna unselect them and reselect them with the big fill it, which I suspect is what I am supposed to have. Nope. You can undo. No, you can't. Let's redo that. Sorry, this is getting very picky. No fill it at all. So we just have to figure out which one we've got here, sorry. So let's add this one. Wait, it's not happy. Interesting. It's also working quite hard here, which is <laughs> making me a little concerned. Uh, you can hear my computer starting to spin up a bit here. It's strange. No quite sure why this is so unhappy. Big fillet. No fillet. Small fillet. Ah, there it is. Painful, sorry. Small fillet there. Small fillet. Rule of thumb, small fillet. Okay, so there we go. That was painful. Let's turn that guy back on. And there's our part after all that. The cluster is inside. And the only way to see that, if we want, we can turn off these ends here. Let's go to the top level. So our bearings are mounted in the housing uh, correctly. The caps are working properly. And if we look at our analysis, we're seeing what we want. Let's make sure you've got that. Sorry about all that fillet uh, dilemmas. And we're not gonna go in the, go ahead here and start adding uh, fasteners and all the rest, which would be ultra, ultra painful. But you could do a pattern, a circular pattern along these guys. And it might be, have to be quite small, so you could adjust these lengths uh, just to fit. Anyway, that's it for me. Uh, Actually, now that we're at it, sorry, as a last comment, you could probably use the same cap for both ends ish. Uh, it's probably not great, but uh, yeah, no, two separate caps. There we go. That is at length how to get it all sorted out. Um, let's go ahead here and get a, ma a volume just so we can see what's going on. So if you want to make sure you've got the right amount of stuff with everything turned on. Oh, and the split, sorry, last thing. Split 
So the split there, so we should have a bunch of bodies. We've got the split housing. So if you want to go in here, you can turn off, for example, the top body. See everything in there. Nice. There it is. So that's our housing inside of there. Let's leave it there so we can get a nice shot of that. And if we want the caps, you can have those off and on. But essentially the caps are there. Let's leave it with one cap off. Get a screenshot of that for the video. But what we want is all the bodies shown. And let's get a volume for this guy. Let's make sure we're seeing it. There we go. And the volume is something I can never find for some reason. Has to think quite a bit here. It's quite a lot of work. And physical Ooh, the volume is huge, so let's change our units back to centimeters. And ask again. That's what we're after. We're after 1,343 cubic centimeters. There we go. There it is in ultra painful detail how to get it all sorted out. Thanks for watching. Uh, over to you.